nobody's ever thought about the issues that are um, out there for people who don't have somewhere to live, what they have to choose between. It's not just do I sleep under a cover tonight or, or not, it's, you know, do I eat, do I buy things that make my life, you know, a little bit easier, do I buy things that I need. We're conditioned to be self-sufficient. We are expected as women to be able to manage our families, manage our lives, manage the lives of those around us. And when you feel out of control and, and that nothing that you do seems to improve your situation, makes you feel as if you have failed not only yourself, but your family, your children and society ultimately. I was at a um, Homeless Connect down on the Gold Coast and we went down with my two little pink bins full of pads and tampons, which was probably the first event I'd ever been to. Um, one lady came up to me and talked, was crying because she had just got her period that day. She had found one tampon on the floor at a surf club throughout the month and that was going to be her it for the month. That broke my heart. But she was crying because I could give her whatever she wanted in pads and tampons. And we talked for a little while and she told me how she now lived in her car with her two children. Her two children were at school, like everybody else's children that day, but she had driven from New South Wales to be on the Gold Coast because she could shower. And she would rather live in her car than have lived in the domestic violence situation that she was living in for eight years. So we see around the world that women living in poverty are often using makeshift ways of, of managing their periods, uh, particularly because it's too expensive often. If you've got to choose between food and menstrual hygiene, you probably choose the food. Uh, so women will often use whatever they can find to manage their period. That might be wadded up toilet paper, or it might be newspapers, it might be dirty rags, I've heard of feathers and sand, and pretty much anything that people can find that will absorb the blood. And some of the problems that we have there is that if we can't clean these absorbent um, items that they're using, is they can lead to things like different sorts of infections. Um, I've heard stories of, say, where um, insects and such have laid eggs in what a woman's using and then all sorts of horrible um, outcomes there. It's really to do with periods. It has to do with the fact that we do not talk about half of us are women and the other half wouldn't be here unless your mother had a period. So it's as simple as the fact that I don't understand why we're not talking about it. And Share the Dignity has been great. You know, I hear about stories of a woman being in a, at a shop counter and not having enough money to buy it and the lady next to her giving her the extra 20 cents that she needed because she was short. There's not one of us that I know that wouldn't give that. So just giving an extra packet of pads or tampons, picking them up when you're doing your grocery shop and putting them into our collection bins when we have April and August collections, that's what you're doing. You're ultimately handing somebody a little bit of dignity. My self-esteem was really depleted. I didn't know how I was going to um, function in the world. Um, to this day, there's a lot of people that know me very well that didn't know that I had nowhere to live for close on 12 months. And the situation became very tense and very unbearable. And I was asked to leave along with my daughter who was still living at home. And at the time I wasn't working full time. I didn't have a steady income and didn't know what I was going to do. I was very mindful that I had three teenage daughters and all three of them needed to have um, not only the dignity maintained, but um, their own private space as well. We would love to become redundant, you know. It would be pretty awesome if uh, they did, we share the dignity wasn't needed and that every woman had a home and felt safe. Yeah, but I can't, I can't see that we can fix that. What we can do is what, what we call a Band-Aid solution and try to fix one little element of uh, what's going on it's wrong in society.
knowing how taking a, taken away my dignity felt by not having access to what's seen in society as a normal home life. Um, I don't want any other woman to have to choose between eating and keeping her dignity. Until we can talk about it more openly, that we will have that stigma associated with it and then it won't come up so much in other programs and government policies and that sort of thing that are really aimed at improving the situation for girls all over Australia, not just homeless women. We have a team leader in every state and every team leader has got to manage their hundred or so volunteers and without that team leader doing that every day on and gathering volunteers and then adding them, making sure that they understand how do things go, we, we couldn't do it. I couldn't run eight different states and then make sure their volunteers are all organised and that there's a, a leader for different areas. Without our state team leaders, we would be lost. When I first met Rochelle a year ago and we started having these conversations, it took me back to the time where I didn't have somewhere steady to live myself, where I was counting the dollars to make sure that the kids had what they needed. You know, that, that once the girls had their periods, they had pads, they had tampons, they had the medications they needed to, to alleviate their pain. And that's when I decided that Share the Dignity was what I wanted to do. I wanted to help raise the awareness. I wanted to help people know that it's okay to be vulnerable and to need help. And those of us who are able should be out there helping. It had to be done. It couldn't have, you couldn't have known that it was happening and not do something about it. If things like pads and tampons can be put on the PBS so that people can get them cheaper when they need them. I know even just as a, a low income earning student, there are weeks where it was difficult to be able to pay for food and also menstrual hygiene products. I didn't give up and I wanted to be an example of the fact that you can survive anything. You know, while what I went through wasn't life threatening, at times it felt that way. Um, at times I was in such a deep depression that I felt I couldn't go on. But I had four kids that needed me and needed to know that they could survive anything because their mum could survive anything. <laughs>